Hey guys, Zach here with Zen Construction bringing you a little bit different video this time around. In this video, I'm gonna show you some of the things that I did to update this bedroom here. Our two-year-old has just moved out of this room into the bigger one down the hall, and now we are getting this one ready to go for a new baby that's coming here pretty soon. So the main thing that I'm gonna be doing in this room is this accent wall right behind me. What I've already done at this point is filled and patched all of the holes and inconsistencies, as well as sprayed on a texture on the walls and the ceiling. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, so first step in building out this accent wall is to add up the panels. There was a, previously a texture on this wall as well as the wood plank, the pallet wall that was up there. So I wanted to make sure I could hide those to have a nice smooth surface. The paneling that I ended up using was not a tempered hardboard, which is what I would traditionally use. But for some reason, I'm assuming because of COVID, there was a shortage in where I'm from. So I could not get my hands on any. I ended up going with a cheaper option actually, and it was a just a wall paneling from Home Depot. And what was great about this stuff is both sides are exactly the same. So because I had a lot of angles, some of my offcuts would not have been able to be used if I used tempered hardboard, because like you know, the back has a texture to it. So this stuff was the same on both sides besides the pattern. So I was, went with using that. It was a little bit cheaper and I had some difficulty with it, but I will talk about that later. So. With my design, it was all based off of that first triangle on the top. The rest of the angles on the entire wall are all based off that shape there. I just kind of picked a random angle, cut it with the track saw, put it up, and then used measurements to fill in the rest of the panels. I had a rough idea of the design that I was going for. So once I was able to kind of map it out, it all went relatively quickly. The entire shape of the wall is all just triangles and rectangles and squares, so very simple. I had used a paneling adhesive, a construction adhesive, as well as an 18 gauge cordless DeWalt brad nailer to hang this all up. Um, several different things could be used. You could use nails, different gauges would work fine. Also a narrow crown stapler would also work really well. My only worry is if for some reason I did use a fastener in a spot that I wasn't going to cover up, let's say I misfired or something, a staple would be significantly more difficult to cover up. Whereas an 18 gauge brad nailer, is just a small little pinhole. So if I did need to patch and sand over that, it would be significantly more simple. So worked my way around the window with the paneling. Tried to get as tight as I could around the window because I'm gonna be building up trim around there. And so I wanted it to be as smooth as possible. Hey guys, just wrapped up putting all of the panels on the wall. It looks really good. As you can see, there are some water spots on some of them. Actually, as I was filming the intro, it started pouring down rain. So I tried to get most of them out of the rain, but obviously I didn't get them all out. So the fibers are feeling like they're raising up a little bit. So what I think I'm gonna do is throw on a bunch of primer. Hopefully because of how absorbent this stuff is, the primer will soak in really well, harden up those fibers, and then I can sand it possibly recoat if I need to. So let's get on to that. So here are some shots of the paneling after it's all done. All of those seams are planning on covering up. I think it turned out great. Everything is flat with one another. So now I am rolling on a primer. I just used a uh, the 123 all-purpose primer, a shellac base, oil base, any, any primer would most likely work, but this is just what I had on hand. So that is what I went with. All right, got all of the primer on the wall. After the first coat, I was able to sand off some of those raised fibers that got wet. It worked exactly like I wanted it to. Everything is nice and smooth now. So the next step is to get all of the trim up on the walls. Okay, so now I'm with trim, I'm going around the entire perimeter. So I did the sides, the top, and the bottom first. I felt that it would be easier to butt up against those 
as opposed to coming back later and then trying to fill those in around the perimeter. I'm sure that this wall was not perfectly square, so in order to mitigate any difficulty down the road, I felt it would have been easier to do the perimeter first. I did a thicker piece along the base. I'm gonna have a baseboard around there, so I wanted the reveal to be the inch and a half, which is the same as all of the smaller pieces. I did use a thicker width trim board around the window to kind of give the window its own accent a little bit more definitive around that area also it matches the rest of the trim in the rest of the house again i'm using a 18 gauge brad nailer as well as some construction adhesive to get all of these trim boards up so this large piece coming down the middle is very crucial the rest of the design actually builds upon this, whether it's coming off at a specific angle or 90 degrees from this one piece. So I made sure to take some extra time, make sure that was straight, fit well, all the angles and joints were perfectly straight because like I mentioned, it was either coming off of this or parallel to it uh, for every single piece the rest of the way. So once that one was up and some of the other crucial main pieces this design seemed to go significantly quicker this is another one this one is coming off perfectly 90 from that main first piece so like i mentioned there's the parallel piece down below the perpendicular piece going up top and just filling in the rest of those now, of course what i wanted to make sure i did was fill and cover all of the seams between the paneling so that was kind of the first priority was get those filled in and then build the design off of that so over on the right side all of the pieces are going to be horizontal and parallel with one another i felt that this was a great way to allow the window to stand out because there's not some distracting angles running through it and around it every piece running through it or going over it or above it is parallel with the top and bottom piece of the trim so i felt that was great the design actually has three or four main sections actually the top triangle piece i'm filling in right now the horizontal pieces on the right the main strip down the middle which i ended up calling the ladder and then just a couple accent pieces down below which end up being covered by the crib anyways i did want to fill those in which i do later so the two miters up at the top in the triangle those are the only two 45 degree miters which create a 90 degree on this entire wall every single other angle is one of the two complementary angles or just a 90 degree butt joint coming off of that. Hey guys, I just wanted to get in here real quick. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about the process and the steps and exactly how I put up the trim. So at the end of this video, I'm going to have some tips and tricks that I learned in putting this up that really, really helped me. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. Now at this point, I'm just going through, filling in any of the blank spaces, trying to keep the ratios the same, keep the design appealing. They're all just small cut pieces. Like I mentioned, I do have some tricks that I use in order to find the perfect angles, make sure that all of the pieces fit really well, had good joints. Finishing up over on the right, getting just some of those small accent pieces and then the pieces down behind the crib. So here is what the wall looked like after everything had been hung up. So no nail holes are filled yet, no caulking. So this is just the trim. Um, I think at this point it looked great. I really liked the design. My wife was a big fan, which is also really important. So the next step for me was to go through and fill in all of the joints and all of the nail holes to make everything nice, flat and smooth. I did use a little bit of a cheaper pre-primed MDF product. So that does involve a little bit more prep work than if I were to use like a nice uh, primed pine or a different type of uh, hardwood. So going through, filling all of those, I use the uh, pink dry indicator. I think it works great. Also for something like this, where there are tons of joints and nail holes to fill. With it being pink, I can see if I hit that spot. It's very obvious if I did miss anything. So for me, it is the product of choice. There were a lot of nail holes and gaps to fill. I was very conscious when I was 
hanging all of the pieces that every time I shot a nail, I was the one who's going to have to go back and fill those in. So after those were all filled in, I went back and sanded all of those smooth. Also, it was a time where I could sand off any other imperfections or blemishes that were in the piece. Also, do not be like me and forget to wear your respirator and or open a window. Um, there was a lot of dust in here and it built up very quickly. I was assuming, oh, it's not that much surface area to sand. I should be fine. I also had the little filter hose on the end of the sander. That obviously did not suffice. So, like I mentioned, don't be like me. You can see just opening the window made a significant difference. So after all the sanding, there was some MDF that was actually exposed. So I just took an all-purpose primer and a spray can, went over all of those pieces just to make sure they were primed and had good adhesion. That actually worked out really well. After it dried, I was able to go back with some 220 and lightly sand. So I, at that point, I did a quick sealing coat. Felt like that would have been a good time. So now after that, I went through and caulked all of the joints and the seams between the panels and the trim pieces. I didn't want any gaps to be shown. This did take a little while. Every single shape needed to be filled around all the sides. All of the little squares around the window needed to be filled. I think I ended up going through almost two full bottles of caulk for that and I was very sparing. I tried to be as much as possible. but. There was a lot of seams and gaps to fill. I'm really glad I did it. I think it turned out perfect. I also went through around the perimeter and filled in the lines between the wall and the trim pieces as well to give like a nice clean sharp point for the paint to go on because this accent wall as well as the, the main textured walls are going to be a different color so i wanted to make sure that i had a nice clean line for that separation of color I was really fortunate that i was able to use the window boxes they were actually made out of a i'm guessing a pine or some type of common board and they were in great shape no water damage nothing like that so i just kept those in place and was able to trim around them a little bit of caulk and clean up but way easier than building a whole new window box. Hey guys, got everything wrapped up with the trim on this wall, sanded, caulked and everything. I think it looks really good. Um, really, really happy with it. So the next step here is paint. I've already painted the ceiling a flat white. The walls are getting a Sherwin-Williams agreeable gray and this wall is getting a Sherwin-Williams retreat. So let's get on to some paint. Okay, so now on to paint. So traditionally in my larger scale remodels, I actually use a painting subcontractor. However, because this was one, it was my own house and it was also a really small room, I felt like I could handle it. I am out of practice a little bit because I have found a really good sub that I use. So it was a little bit of a learning curve, but I did end up figuring it out. This accent wall, I did splurge a little bit and buy the really nice quality paint. I used the, the bare marquee in this instance. Oftentimes I don't need to purchase a paint that nice because actually my subcontractor does two coats on all of the walls. And so buying a higher quality paint is almost pointless in that case because he's going to go back and do a second coat anyway. So buying a paint that's designed for a single coat is just a waste of money at that point. So but with this accent wall, I knew there was going to be a lot of imperfections potentially. And so getting a nicer, higher quality paint that has good coverage was really important to me because I wanted to make sure that this accent wall did look really nice. So going through with a paintbrush, essentially cutting in all of the joints where I felt like the, the small foam roller wasn't going to reach. Again, kind of like with the caulk, there was just a lot of little squares and spaces to fill. So now with the foam roller, it does leave a little bit of a texture and I was okay with that, but as long I just wanted the texture to be consistent. So I went over every single panel on the tops of all of the trim pieces with this foam. Make sure it's nice and cohesive, have good coverage. And another benefit of splurging a little bit and buying the higher quality paint is that it really only needed one coat. I did go back and do some touch-ups and you know some thin spots, whatever that I had missed, but it did not need a full coverage coat um, my wife picked all the colors in this room 
and I am a huge fan. I think it turned out really, really nice. All right, guys, the time has come. Let's check out the final result. Off camera, we were able to bring in the furniture and decor. I think this design turned out awesome. The overall goal with it was to make it as relaxing and as inviting as possible. Sometimes newborn baby can be a little bit stressful, so anything we could do to make that relaxing and tranquil, that's what we wanted to do. I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I know this one was a little bit different than what I normally post, a little bit smaller scale, a little bit more in depth. So I really appreciate your feedback and what you guys think. If you like this video and you feel like you learned something, I would really appreciate it. Hit that like button. Also, if you like this type of content, construction, remodel type stuff, I have lots of other videos you can check out, as well as if you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, you'll be notified when I do post. I try to post as often as I can. Of course, remodels do take a little while, so I'm limited to that factor. But again, thank you so much for all of your support, and thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Guys, a little bit of bonus content here showing you some of the steps that I took to simplify hanging all this trim. So the first thing I would need to say is simplify your angles. Okay, make a design that is simple and utilizes the same angles. So how I did that is I started off with this big triangle up here and it created a complementary set of angles, right? So since this is a perfect 90, these two angles that it created are complementary, meaning that when they're combined together, they create 90 degrees. So using math, using the Pythagorean theorem, I'm not gonna tell you what my angles are because every room is gonna be a little bit different. But once you figure out what those two angles are, write them down somewhere, know what they are so that you can take your miter saw and set them to those points every single time. Once I found those two angles, I actually created these two reference blocks. As you can see, when I put them together, they do create 90 degrees, so they're complementary great thing about these blocks is they have a known distance on them on the long side. So if you actually look, these are the same. In my case, I use four inches. So I know that no matter what, this distance is always four inches. In this design, the only angles on this entire wall, besides these two 45 degree miters, but every single other one is either one of these two angles, the more deep one or the shallow one, or a 90 degree butt joint. So, when I was setting up and measuring all of these different pieces, I was able to use one of these and they go both directions. So for example, if I needed to figure out the distance between this, I'm not having to measure between here and then some arbitrary point on this line. I'm actually, I could take my block, put it exactly where I want it to go, make a mark, measure this distance between my mark and where it needs to go, add four inches, and now that piece is perfect. This comes in handy when you're trying to cover up a seam. So for example, this piece, had a seam between the two panels. I was able to take this block, set it up, mark it, add four inches to whatever that distance was, and that piece would fit over that seam perfectly, over nail holes or anything else that you're trying to hide. If you look at these blocks, even on this one, how all of these are a little bit more complicated, but they're all parallel perfectly. If you take this, set it up, and now that it changes angles, you can use this one and do the same thing. So I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thanks again so much for watching.